Okay, in this video, we are going to do some derivatives with parametric equations. And before we start, I just want to ask you guys to subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. And for my subscribers, thank you guys so much. Okay, so in particular, we are focusing on getting dy dx and d2y dx2 when t is 4. If you refer back to the curve, when t is 4, you have the point right here. And okay, you, in fact, you have two ways to do this. The first way is you can, you know, since you are talking about the top half of the graph right here, you can refer back to the Cartesian equation for the top half right here. You can say y is 2 plus square root of x plus 1. And we did that last time. And once again, let's just focus on the top half. So let me erase that. So this and that are the same. So in fact, you can actually figure this out without looking at the t if you don't want to. And let me just do it right here with you guys. If you differentiate this, you get particularly the dy dx that we are looking for. So just go ahead and do the dd whatever, <laughs> ddx right here. So right here, you get the dy dx. And on the right-hand side, you differentiate square root of x plus 1, pretty much, because that will give you 0. You get 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1. And now here's the deal. When t is 4, you cannot plug in 4 into this x, because this is t. I would need to plug in x right here. Well, how can we find the x? When t is 4, you plug into here. 4 squared is 16, minus 2 times 4, which is 8. 16 minus 8 is 8. So this is when x equals 8, right? So if you're working with Cartesian equation, you will have to plug in x is 8. So you do that, you get 1 over 2 square root of 8 plus 1. Work that out, you get 1 over 6. So that's wonderful. And now let's see if we can do it with just the parametric equations. Well, well, we have to talk about what does the dy dx represent geometrically. That's the slope of the tangent line to the curve, isn't it? So when you're talking about when t is 4, which is this point, you are going to first talk about the line tangent to the curve right here. And let me just you know, say, hey, touch. And we want to find the slope right here. Right? So dy dx is pretty much the slope, and is the dy dx. And if you look back to the x and y equations, maybe you can show, OK, let's just differentiate this. Well, if you just look at x is equal to t squared minus 2t and differentiate that, in fact, what you get is dx dt. And if you just do the derivative right here with respect to t, you get 2t minus 2. And what does this mean? Well, if you graph this curve, just like how we did it last time, you start right here when t is equal to 0, and it goes like this, and then like that. And as you can see, the position changes means that the x value changes and also the y value changes. This right here represents the velocity in the x values. So you see, if you plug in t is 0, you get negative 2. That means when t is 0, we are moving toward the left. When t is 0, we are moving toward the left. And similarly, if you just differentiate that, you actually just get dy dt, and that's equal to the derivative of this with respect to t, is just 1. And 1 is positive 1. This means you're always moving upward, right? The y directions just keep going up. And then the x direction is more interesting. You go to the left, and then you go to the right. But we want to make a connection between dy dx and this derivative. This is how. So let me show you. dy dx, this is equal to dy dx with gaps. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, this is the same as if we divide the top and bottom by dt. How's that? Fair enough, right? I can just divide the top and bottom by dt, and guess what? On the top, dy dt is exactly what we have right here, which is 1. So I can just plug in 1 right here, and then over dx dt is that, which is 2t minus 2. And now you actually have an expression of dy dx in terms of t. And you can look at this and plug in the t value. I'll just say this is when t is equal to 4. And you can say dy dx is equal to 
plugging 4 in here, you get 1 over 2 times 4, and then minus 2. And uh, work that out, you also get 1 over 6, which is the same answer right here. So we know, you know, this is pretty legit. And you know we got it right. Okay, so this is nice. You just divide the derivatives, right? dy dt, and then you divide it by dx dt, you get the dy dx. That's not bad at all. Now, let's move on to d2y dx2. This...